Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well today. We'll be talking about Captain Marvel once again because it looks like the media just does not want to stop. Doesn't want to stop with this silly narrative of having to talk about, oh my goodness, did y'all realize that Captain Marvel is a female? Did y'all know that Captain Marvel is going to be a female? Oh my goodness, do you know that Captain Marvel is a female superhero? Oh my gosh, this is so huge because she's a female. It's, it's important, and, and, and she's good already. The movie hasn't even come out, and this is going to be the best, most game-changing film of all time. Why? Because she's a woman. Because of gender. Yes, indeed. The, the sexism continues uh, from, these, from these silly people, and it just doesn't seem like it's going to stop. And I really do feel like, and I, I, I'm concerned because, honestly, I've said this constantly before, I trust Kevin Feige. I think Kevin Feige being in charge of the MCU has been a great decision. He has made non-stop great films again obviously even the weaker films like some people would say iron man 3 even though personally i think iron man 3 is better than iron man 2 but that's just me again that's just where i stand on that one but even other ones that more people would agree are, are some of the weaker ones like the first incredible hulk you know when you look at the films like this every single one of them even the weaker ones of those films are still good are still entertaining are still ones that you would want to go see over and over again even films like for example one of my least favorites which is the second avengers film is still one that i would go see over a handful of other films including and most especially anything that's coming out of the dc universe with the one exception being wonder woman but even that one on a bad day i might want to watch the avengers 2 instead but anyway this all comes down to the fact that kevin feige is again trustworthy he has made non-stop good films the closest that he ever got to really getting involved in any political messaging whatsoever was black Panther, but even that one, it's kind of hard to really say that it's a SJW or identity politics film because the moments are few and far between. They're there, trust me. I mean, as someone who saw it twice just to make sure that I wasn't just, you know, reading into things too much, the messaging is there, but it's not nearly as much as it could have been, especially for a story uh, that dealt with the situations that Black Panther dealt with. This film, I do feel is in trouble. And the reason why it's in trouble is not so much because of Kevin Feige or any kind of SJW influence on the story itself. Because as I said before, I honestly don't think that's going to happen. Again, Kevin Feige has yet to prove me wrong, has yet to uh, concern me with any films that he's done. So until he does, again, this could be the first. And I will tell, I will definitely say, hey, guess what? This is what this is when the movie comes out, You know, if it does live up to that, what a lot of people think that this film might be. But until it does, I'm going to trust Kevin Feige. What I do not trust, though, is just like when the media took Black Panther and spun it into this identity politics nonsense, they're doing the same thing already with Captain Marvel. And I know that that's got a lot of people wondering and worried, saying, oh my goodness, is Captain Marvel, is the film itself going to be the same way? And as I said, we honestly do not know yet at this point. But if the media is any indication, it looks like there could be some elements in there that... Unfortunately, the, the media is just going to poison this film before it even comes out. Because even if the film itself doesn't have any of these elements in it, just by knowing the media narrative, knowing that the media are automatically going to give this high critical ratings because of the fact of what kind of movie this is. Just because we know that already going in, that they're going to have that inherent bias and that no matter what review you read, especially from the top critics, there's going to be some mention to gender and identity politics in it. It's just, it's the way, unfortunately, that critics work today. That's just, unfortunately, the way that the world works. And it's really sad. And it's so funny how they talk about, oh, we need more, more diversity in film criticism. You know what? I agree. But you know what we need? We more... We we need more political diversity in film. We need more philosophical diversity in film because you know what? You know what we have too many of in film criticism? We have too many SJW crazy identity politics, some of whom, again, we would say also liberal. But again, I don't want to throw all liberals into it either because there are some people who might be liberal politically who keep that stuff out of their review. So I don't want to use that word to describe them. But SJW identity politics, yes, absolutely. That's what we need less of in film criticism because the fact that people will artificially rank certain films higher because of their subject matter is a problem. It's, it's when people, again, let their subjective view of the world, the subjective view of things, interact and affect their objective view of the film itself. And I think that that's problematic. So yes, we do need, and Brie Larson was the one who said it, who said, we need more diversity. I'm a white woman. I'm saying that we need more diversity in film criticism. Again, as I said before, no one is stopping anyone from getting involved with film criticism. Whether or not people listen to those uh, reviews or not, that's up to the person to be able to write things that are engaging for the audience. I'm sorry, but like just to, trying to force people to accept diversity is just not the way that things work in the real world. However, even though she's the one that said this, if we're talking about a diversity of ideas, I think that is definitely something that we should be talking about because it has less to do with, you know, the background of the person and more to do with the fact that 
having that diversity will then lead to, guess what, more objective opinions. And I'm not saying that people who are conservative or Republican are going to be more objective, but having that balance between the two will give us a clear medium and also will make it very clear when people are being political, one side or the other. Again, having that kind of dynamic. When everyone or the vast majority of people are on one side, it becomes a little bit more muddled. It becomes a little bit more difficult to see those things unless you know what you're looking for. And again, that's the reason why general audiences, I say, don't really, <laughs> don't really read too far into the critics consensus because a lot of times it's going to be artificially high because of political reasons. Look more into the audience because the audience are going to tell you, is it a good time? That is, again, what you want to look to when you look to audience ratings. But once again, I do feel like the the uh, the media portrayal of this story, the media portrayal of Captain Marvel is what's going to end up sinking it if it if it does indeed get sinking. Because I still think there's a chance that this could make a really decent amount of money because, again, it's a Marvel film. No Marvel film has lost money yet. Even uh, The Incredible Hulk made money. So I don't think that that's going to happen. But could it affect the overall number that this film could end up making? I think it's potential to happen. I mean, just look at what Star Wars did. I mean, Star Wars, especially a solo story, guess what? News media picked up John Kazan and others saying, oh, yeah, that's right, uh, Lando's a pansexual. And guess what? That pretty much sunk audiences, especially families, from wanting to go see that film. Again, there were many other reasons why that film didn't do well, but that was definitely one of them. That was definitely a big part of it. So if they just keep on going nonstop every single day talking about this damn story and trying to turn it into a political mess, it's going to have the same effect. It's going to have a negative effect on the overall gross of the film and also how well received the film is by audiences. I'm not worried about the critics because the critics are already in the bag for this film. But as far as it being a film that other people, that general audiences can like, that is what is going to affect. And again, it's it's because of paragraphs like this that really get things started. So it's starting to look as if Brie Larson's Captain Marvel will be Marvel's considered response to an, all those critics who complain about the lack of a headlining female superhero in the studio's first nine years. See, there it is. It starts off already. The first thing that this article from The Guardian says is identity politics. The first thing before even getting into the actual character and how cool the character might be, the story arcs. No, no, let's talk about gender. Let's talk about the characters. In case you didn't know, Captain Marvel is a woman. Okay? That, that's very clear. The picture that you posted at the very beginning is, is, is very clear who we're dealing with here. Even if someone who didn't know who Captain Marvel was, they'd be like, okay, I, I understand. She's a woman. Okay. Let's move on. Let's talk about her character because that should be more important, right? so funny how you go back to these words like we should be judged based on the content of our character and not the color of our skin, not our gender or anything else, but the content of our character. The same is true also in film. Film should be judged based on the characters in the film, should be based off of the stories of the film, which you could really say is like the character of the film as well. However, it's interesting how people who try to embrace those words or claim to embrace those words end up just flying in the face of that every single time they have to talk about these films. Disappointed that Black Widow always has to fight lower level baddies because she lacks real superpowers? Okay, well, she doesn't have superpowers. Again, she's awesome. I think she's great. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, yeah. <laughs> According to Lars in the new edition of Total Film, Carol Danvers will be able to move entire planets. And this is to me is where concern brings into the actual movie itself, is are they going to try and make her so OP? Are they going to try and make her so powerful that she is able to do every, anything and everything that no male character has ever done before for the sake of her being a female character? Because if that's the case, that's going to cause a lot of problems with the film. Because again, people should not be treated a certain way because of the gender or because of their race or anything like that positive or negative. I'm sorry, you have to be consistent with that. People should be treated as people, plain and simple. So when it comes to this, I'm really concerned that this is the direction they're going to go. And I know a lot of other people, a lot of the audience members are concerned about this as well. Upset that the Avengers seem to be led by bickering super blokes while the ladies take a back seat. There may never be, there may have never been a superhero so intrinsically linked to the survival of humanity as Captain Marvel, whom the studio has pitched as Earth's best hope in the fight against Thanos, a figure even the Hulk found himself cowering before. She is even played by an Oscar winner just to ensure we are absolutely clear that the half Kree hero's arrival in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a very big deal indeed. And again, it's a big deal because she's a woman. That's what these critics want to get apart. You don't, if you do not understand how important this film is to history, if you do not understand how huge this is to the women's movement, then, then you're just a sexist. And you may not even realize it. There's, there's probably something inherent within you where you just don't understand. You just don't understand the inherent bias and sexism and patriarchal structure that you are a part of, that you, that you put yourself into. That, that's all I hear. 
whenever I hear this nonsense being talked about, that that's what I see. That's what I imagine in my mind. Is someone preaching to me about sexism? Which again, I'm sorry, it's just, it's silly. All this is all this as it should be. But is Danvers up to the task? We'll find out when Captain Marvel is released in March. Said in the 1990s, it will see the superhero battling to stop Earth's invasion by the Skrulls. The arrival on the scene of the nefarious shape-shifting aliens, a staple of the comics, throws up all kinds of intriguing possibilities of the past. So it looks like it starts off again. Now it's going into the actual understanding of the story, her character, um, her background, etc., things like that, which I really don't want to dive too much into because I kind of want to go in with as little knowledge as possible about this character, except for the basics about this character, because I want to see, is this a good written story? Is this a well-written story? Is this a story that people who are not comic book readers, who do not, who, who are going in blind to this film, is it going to appeal to them? Or is it just going to try and appeal to a certain audience? And again, that is the biggest question. Is this film going to try and go identity politics? Which I don't think, as long as Kevin Feige is involved, I don't think that's going to happen, but again, this might be the film to prove me wrong, but we shall see. Or is it going to be a film that is going to be able to stand on its own, have a good story, good character arc, and treat everything fairly? I really hope it's that. Anyway, guys, what y'all thought about that? About this? Do you think that Captain Marvel is going to be a good film? Do you think that we should be worried? Again, this this already the precursor saying that she's going to be able to destroy or move at least move entire planets. Do you think that they're going to make her too OP? And do you think they're going to try and tie that into the fact that she is a female? Or do you think that Kevin Feige and the others are going to make this a good story? Do you think that they're just going to ignore the identity politics and instead focus on the character development? Again, I really hope that's the case because I just want a good character male female black white i don't care and most people most general audiences do not care about that stuff the only people that do care about that are people like over at the mary sue who actually just posted an article today about how jeff goldblum has apparently endorsed some fake relationship of fan fiction that occurs between the grandmaster and loki which again it's just i bet that's interesting but anyway guys what do y'all thoughts let me know in the comments below i greatly appreciate that if you like this video hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe it really does help me out help me out a lot you are all amazing people i love you guys so much have a great day and as always god bless